Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And as you can see, I'm in the sanctuary today. I pray that you are having a great day. I pray that uh, the answer you're giving people when they ask you, how you doing? I'm praying that you're saying better than ever. Praise the Lord, because the God of the Bible is alive and well. He's moving by his spirit. And despite all of the chaos and the things that are going on in the world, our God is still in charge. Now we're praying for, listen, listen. If your heart is in the right place and you understand what's going on, you're, you're joining me and we're praying for the assault and the attack on our law enforcement. My friends, without law, without law enforcement, society breaks down and it descends into chaos. And there are powerful people who are vested in uh, making the streets of America streets of chaos, streets of violence. And be, let, let me say this, and you know, I shouldn't have to say this. We know that there are some bad apples in the police department, just as there are bad apples in your profession and mine. All right. But listen, oh, the overwhelm over all majority of law enforcement officers are people who for very little pay, put on the uniform and hazard their lives. And I tell you, when men were on their way to a, a call where a mother has called in for protection against her son and those two men are killed, I disagree vehemently with Black Lives Matter and their position on this. Those officers were indeed deed heroes and we're praying for their families. We're praying for our nation, my friends. We got to be wiser uh, than that. We, we, we need we need law and we need order so that people can run their businesses. We need to pray about these uh, DAs who are actually announcing crimes that they will no longer prosecute. Can you believe me? I mean, did, did you ever think that we would be living in a day where those who are the head law enforcement officers are giving a list of crimes that they will no longer uh, prosecute people if they commit those crimes? And then when we see the, the uh, people beginning to respond and to break the law, then there are those who say, well, there's no connection between the two. Come on, my friends. You have greater discernment than that. I certainly do. So we need to pray for our nation and pray for God's safety. Now, I know you want to know, uh, but what are my thoughts on uh, Brian Flores, who was uh, uh, the head coach for the Miami Dolphins. I was stunned when they let him go. I was stunned. I was stunned big time because that young man was doing a, a super job as far as I'm concerned, riding the ship. He he did have, uh, he gave them two winning seasons, and, and when he took over, it was a mess. Now, I've been a Dolphins fan since 1970, and I'm, I'm, I listen, I'm ready to just jump ship, I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw the, uh, the lawsuit, that uh, uh, Brian is, is bringing against the NFL and against the, the, the Miami Dolphins. I, I'll be honest with you, my initial thought was, wow. And uh, I, I did say this, though. Iron represents iron. Independent thought, an uh, independent thinker uh, uh, recognizes another independent thinker. Courage recognizes courage. It takes courage for him to take that stand. I don't know whether he will win the lawsuit or not, but I tell you, I admire him. I admire him for not wanting to be a pawn, not wanting to be used. And uh, uh, I don't know whether Bill Belichick meant to or not, but I'm glad that he sent that email. He congratulated the wrong Brian and the Brian that he thought he was talking to said, hey, my interview is not until a few days uh, uh, hadn't happened yet. And that's when he realized that, I guess, that he had sent the uh, email to the wrong guy. And so he goes and goes through the motion knowing that a decision has been made already. Now, this is just my personal ob 
observation, and I may lose a, fr- a few of you on this, and, and you know what? So be it. But when you look at the man that they hired versus the guy that they passed on, the little fellow that they hired, uh, the scruffy looking guy, it, 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 it doesn't even pass the, the, the eye test uh, to me when you're talking about trying to get someone in place who is going to lead a football team. You need to look halfway disciplined if you're going to talk about leading disciplined men. It's just like a fat guy doing a seminar on fasting. Who's going to believe him? Now, I know I can can imagine right now some of you are saying this, that, and the third. Say it. It's all right with me. But I don't believe. Uh, Listen, you have to admit something is going on in the NFL. And I said to Gary the other day, I said, man, listen, I I know what the solution is, but it won't take place. Because the solution is if if the players are 70 percent black in the NFL and if they are convinced that uh, the, the black head coaches are being held to a higher standard, which many of them are because, you know, most coaches don't get fired when they have winning seasons. I mean, we've seen black coaches routinely let go uh, after they've just had a winning season, and most of them don't get a chance to be a head coach again. I know that the owners are a billionaire boys club, and I know you're not watching today to hear me talk about football, but I got to just bring this up. I pray that the men, if we're 70% black in terms of players, brothers, flex your muscles. Use your position. How about this? Use your platform. Isn't that the phrase that everybody uses? Well, I want to use my platform for good. Well, here's a good thing to do. Uh, 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 Join together and say, you know what? If you guys are going to keep doing this, you billionaires. Because one thing about it, you're a billionaire, but you can't play football. You can't catch the ball, you can't run the ball, you can't block, you can't tackle, you're too old, you can't do it. So we do bring value to the table because without us, there's no game. Let them know that you're not going to participate if they're going to keep this uh, craziness up. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that you, you will see improvements and changes over time. But that's just me. Now. I want to invite you, if I haven't turned you off <laughs> and made you upset and, and, oh, I don't think he should be weighing in on that. Now, you can't be. You, listen, listen, I weigh in on just about everything. And most of the time, if I fail to weigh in on it on, on, on one of these little promos here, it's not that I'm not going to talk about it later because we live in the world and we're in a world where uh, you have to you have to speak up uh, and say things sometimes that are not comfortable. But uh, I've, I've often said, you know, I, I live my life where no one has their hand in my pocket. No ideology controls uh, what I think or what I, I, I say. I think what I think. And I pray about things. And I seek the Lord. And, and I, oh, I always want to come down on the side of Scripture. And speaking of Scripture, I'm going to be teaching the Word of the Lord tonight. And I want to, uh, we're still talking about the triumphant life. And uh, last uh, Thursday when we talked about it, we walked even a little more uh, in uh, dealing with uh, uh, sexual abuse and, and this this dark hidden sin that is taking place and how uh, we need we need God to help bring the the, the sexual passions and desires and the, uh, these things under control for people are damaging people destroying people's lives for their own sexual gratification and how dare you walk into incest or how dare we allow these things to take place uh, right in our midst and we say nothing but for my friends out there and I'm closing for my friends out there who have encountered sexual abuse for my friends who have you say preacher I'm one of them I was abused I am a victim of incest I know the pain what do I do what do I do 
How do I carry on? How do I move on from here? Join me tonight. I want to talk to you a little bit about that because in the Bible, God has solutions. No, I'm not a therapist. No, I'm not a psychologist, nor am I a psychiatrist. And I will not be coming from secular psychiatry, secular psychology, or secular anything. I'll be speaking to you from the Word of God. So join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for... Bible study. I know you were trying to figure out how I was going to do it. <laughs> yes, we're going to walk in the scriptures together. The word of the Lord is right. And I look forward to sharing with you right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. God bless you, my friends.